Uh, Get down, M. As the cat now is going to ruin this stream for me. And it's time once again for the next episode of Digital Dice, number 20, being taped this fifth day of December 2019. I'm Ron Juckett, not in Studio A, B, or C, and he is... I'm Dave over here in Studio B. You're <laughs> think, in B. I think so it's Studio B. So your downstairs studio is B, your kitchen table is C. What's A? A is the other side of the basement where I was originally set up back in the days of the Radcast hockey show, and it just... It was just like I was the first guy to get going. So I was Studio A, and my friend in New Hampshire was Studio B. Guy in California was Studio C. It was just a fun thing that we did. But uh, now that that show's not done anymore, so, uh, I don't want to be Studio A because Studio A is over there on my left. So I'm over here in Studio B, and Studio C is the dining room upstairs with the Tree of Life. So. And this is always Studio 4 here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> at the World Headquarters in Burlington, Vermont. How are you? Ah, it's been a couple weeks since we did a show. Um, I got a year older since I've we taped one of these. Yeah, what did you turn? 79? 70? What is it? Uh, old enough that I actually have to, you know, hand spool my 8 millimeter highlights of Bobby Orr. 48! 48! <laughs> Yeah, that's nothing. You're still young. You're still that's young. That's right. And so I recovered from turkey and sweet potato pie. And oh. we did a very, very different Thanksgiving this year. Just through circumstances, we ended up um, uh, just, uh, just staying home, just the two of us. We did a couple of quick visits. I didn't have a stitch of turkey at Thanksgiving this year. We we ended up just visiting people, saying hi. Even you. And I had we had ham. We've, we've always talked about doing something different, so we did it this year. And we stayed home and just cooked the two of us. We had uh, we cooked the ham. We now we had you know stuffing the potatoes with it, but just we didn't have the turkey. And uh, it was fun. It was fun. We just did the ham at the house, and then uh, we were done, and uh, we we went and played some games, and that was it, was it was a fun, fun, very low key, less stressful Thanksgiving this year. Yeah, it was just the two of us this year. The weather wasn't that great, uh, so we really couldn't go out. Our company that we normally have is coming for lunch on Saturday. And so, yeah, you know, it was very low key. Watched some football and uh, uh, got thrown out of my kitchen like I do every year. <laughs> yeah, it it was. Uh, it's actually it's good that we planned it this year. We had a, a really rough few days for Thanksgiving. Uh, yes, my, yeah. my wife went in the hospital overnight, and then she come home, and uh, we had to rush the dog to the emergency room for something he was having. We got there just in time to, to save. I don't know if he would have died, but it was, you know, whatever he had going on, we, we got there and, and saved. So You don't need things to rupture no matter where Yeah, it was just like, you know, what, what is like we look at what the hell's going on in your backside? And we rushed him down and said, yep, good thing you got here because if that had ruptured, it would have been pretty bad. So And it's tough because over the holidays, things, gen- I mean, emergency hospitals are always open, of course, but that's not something you can just wait to over the next day to we go to We were going to wait. Home. We were like, wow, so it's Thanksgiving Eve. Let's, let's, you know, let's wait till Friday. And I'm like, no, the more we looked at it, it's like, no, we got to go now. So, yeah, so it was uh, between hospitals and vets. It was not a fun pre-Thanksgiving, but but everyone's home now and, and hopefully doing better. So <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, so we talked about on the last show, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So we'd like to know uh, what did you, you y'all get? What did y'all get? Uh, what did you? Uh, what are you playing in the whole bit? So, uh, Ron, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the things we picked up over the Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. So, uh, yo, so what are some of the things you got? Let's see. I took advantage of the Strat roster sale and picked up uh, four rosters for the price of three, which comes out to an average of nineteen twenty-five per roster, down from the twenty-five. And so I got. Three hockey seasons, 75, 76, 77, 78, and 79, 80. Because eventually I want to do, I'm doing the kind of ass backwards or bass backwards, if you will. Uh, that eight year run where the Canadians won four straight and the Islanders won four straight. And so I'll do a, eventually a video on my channel about the 81, 82 season. So I picked up three of those seasons. And then for my freebie, because it was buy three and get the fourth for free, I picked up the, uh, 120 best basketball players. Oh, wow. Uh, for strap basketball. And 
uh, let the computer draft some teams and ended up with Burden and Isaiah on the same team, and that just was not done. <laughs> uh, and I, and I'm trying to figure out a good project for that. And so that's pretty much what I picked up for for Black Friday, and you know, buying for the future, which is what those sales are for. And uh, by the way, you've now been posted on the Stratomatic Facebook group. Did you know that? No. What did I do? Yes. Someone made a meme. Who would that someone be, me? Someone, <laughs> oh, if I'm not talking about myself, and my cat isn't calling me anything bad over there, she's in fact not even paying attention to me, then we must be talking about you. And just as I signed off for my football game and went to see uh, what was going on on Facebook, so, a mutual friend of ours shared something that someone had done and had been shared with the Stratomatic face group page, yeah. Facebook group page. Yes. Congratulations. You were wondering if you were going to go viral. <laughs> well, what I did, is I love that that woman in the cat meme, mem, whatever you want to call those things. It's just you could put anything to that, and it's just hysterical. That The cat just sitting there is just – the face on that cat makes the whole thing. So the, with the, <laughs> yeah. the senior salad, yeah. Yeah, well, he's like eating a salad with a butler behind him, or that's what it, that's how I take it. So it's just funny. He's like calm and cool. He's like the evil, evil leader in a movie, you know, behind the desk, all you know, cocky and smug, you know. So anyway, yeah. So I, is, she is the prototypical Bravo, Real Housewives, yeah, thing. screaming, pointing at the cat. So, so I made yeah. the meme and and I said, uh, stop buying more games, and then the cat says, I'm buying seasons. <laughs> That was great, <laughs> and I and I put that on our digital to dice group. Oh, by the way, our, our website digital to dice dot com, and over on Facebook, facebook dot com slash group slash digital to dice. So I put the mem a meme on on our group, and then I put it on Dave Little's group too, the sports simulations group. But I didn't put it anywhere else because sometimes they they frown on that stuff. They don't. They, as funny as it can be, if everybody just started posting that all day to groups, I can see how it'd be. It'd be a little bit much, so I didn't. But I found a lot of people sharing uh, that little little uh, joke that I that put out great. there. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, it's it's so targeted towards our group of people with cards and dice, where it's like, stop buying games. I'm buying seasons. I'm buying seasons. <laughs> Which so, is yes. exactly why I didn't buy any new games. I just bought. Yeah. Seasons. So if you see that, yeah, that that that's one that I did create up there, and it's, it's, I'm glad people are sharing, and having some fun with it. It's a uh, uh, I've had a few of those that went viral over over the you know over the years, and, and it's always fun when that happens. Uh, so what'd you buy? So yeah, so I, I got a, like like you said a whole bunch of things here um, that uh, you, you, you stock up on sale. You know that's what you do, and so I uh, I picked up um, uh, some strat seasons because they had the raw not the roster yeah is it the roster sale or the card sale you did cards cards okay yeah so I so they had the card sale and so I picked up uh, a couple of baseball seasons and a couple more hockey seasons so I should be fine with those for quite some time in fact there's another big sale they're having today but I I got everything I really would play right now with cards and dice so I'm just gonna hold off on that but I picked up a bunch of uh, baseball and hockey strat seasons. Uh, I picked up uh, Out of the Park Baseball 20 for the PC. 10 bucks through, through nine ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't leave it there. And I've actually been streaming some games, and uh, the, 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 the live rooms have been filling up uh, on my channel there with uh, the Out of the Park Baseball 20. So um, I, I, and I'm just going back. and Oh, the new segment on my show, by the way, uh, Dave's Classic Rewind. I got a new segment. Yeah, it's on your channel. That's awesome. Yeah, that's on my YouTube channel, uh, Dave. I think it's uh, Dave Gardner Videos or something like that. But um, anyway, and, and the reason behind that is is I don't want to get into any huge projects. I always feel guilty if I play a game. It's got to be part of a season or part of a playoffs or part of something. So I said, you know, I want to go back and just play some one-offs. And I'm going to call it Dave's Classic Rewind. That'll be the segment. It's just me going back and playing a game from my past and it, it may be uh, a game seven. It may be somebody's first or last game, or it may just be any game from my past. And the idea behind it was, Ron, that I explained on, on, on my YouTube channel was that when I was a kid sitting home Saturday afternoon and the Major League Baseball game of the week comes up or Sunday, 
you know, they used to have NHL uh, on NBC, you know, back in the day. You didn't know who, which teams were playing. They were usually the top teams, but you didn't know. So you could be sitting there, and it's like, man, am I getting, you know, uh, the Tigers and the Indians today, or am I getting the, the Phillies and the Cardinals? Mm-hmm. And back in the day, you know, the rabbit ears and no cable, no internet, that was a big deal seeing some of those teams. And But that was half the fun of it because you'd see that, and it would be a one-off because you really couldn't follow the Phillies or the Cardinals, you know, in the 70s or early 80s. There was no way to do that. Baseball Digest, what was that, once a week, once a month? Once a month. Yeah, maybe the newspaper the next day, but there was no place to go and cool. um, and, 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 and get these things here. So my my thing was is that, you know, I would like to do a, a one-off game from the past and uh, and just have it all be by itself and it doesn't have to be part of a bigger project and just enjoy sitting down and enjoying that one game. So. Since we do these live to tape, and you didn't see what was happening. The cat just walked across the keyboard, and I kept waiting for her to either put the computer to sleep or to make you, make you scream when re-editing. But, but, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that was fine. I did see the cat walk across, and you went off camera for a second. That, 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 <laughs> that's okay. That, that's how we do it here. But, yeah, so that's the idea behind Dave's Classic Rewind. So I've been playing some of those on the, uh, the Out of the Park Baseball 20. I just went back and played a game, and I just broadcast the game. I really don't play it. I just let the computer play it and broadcast it, and that's what I'm going to do with that game because I don't know anything about managing baseball or anything like that. I mean, I might eventually take over a season. And uh, or a team, and, and and maybe you know steal some bases or, th- or put in pictures. But you know, I'm enjoying just broadcasting that. So out of the park baseball, I picked up the Strat seasons. I also picked up uh, a couple of Downey seasons. I uh, picked up a couple of seasons for fast action football, Mean Gene football, and game winning drive. Those are my three favorite Downey games, and they all do something a little different. That's what I like about it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I did uh, – I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on the other football game and what we're playing. I'll hold off on that till we get to okay. what we're playing. Uh, but getting back to the Black Friday sales, um, all-star lineup baseball. I got all-star yes, lineup baseball. Yes, you did get that. Yep. And I don't know if it's really considered a Black Friday sale, but I did get that in, and I ordered three seasons uh, through Craig. And um, and I, I printed out a couple of teams, and I actually uh, – I did an unboxing video of that on my channel, and I did – uh, a few innings of a game on my channel as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, I just started playing the basic mode, and it, it, it's really fun. It's really kind of a fun, simple game basic mode. Is, um, and so eventually I'll, I'll figure out uh, when I get some time, when people aren't in the hospital or, or the vets or the if I'm not shoveling 12 inches of snow that we got the other day, I'll eventually sit down and try to learn the advanced portion of that game. Um, but yeah, and then the last thing I picked up on Black Friday, Cyber Monday was a uh, hockey blast from play.com. And that hasn't come in yet. No, that, I don't even think they've shipped it yet. In fact, they, as soon as I bought it, they said, we're going to get slammed. Don't bother contacting us till Friday, <laughs> you know, cause we not, we might not ship it for a week. So all the, okay. not, not, I haven't got any, anything yet. The only thing I get in was the all-star lineup baseball, but uh, I haven't got any strat seasons in yet. I haven't got hockey blast and everything else was digital. So it came right over. Um, so, yeah, so I had a busy Black Friday between uh, Out of the Park, All-Style Lineup Baseball, my Strat Seasons, my Downey Games, and Hockey Blast. So, yeah, so I, I did. I, I stocked up, and now it's like I, I told myself I can't buy anything for a few months now. I got plenty to play. I got some different varieties of games. I got plenty of things I can stream uh, with my Dave's Classic Rewind. I can just pick a game and, and go for it, and boom, and, and that is that. Absolutely. So, so that's what we did. Uh, for a Black Friday. So should we get into uh, what we're playing? Absolutely. And Becky, can you afford to get me into USC too? Oh, no. You, you, oh, you. Oh, they get worse and worse every time we do a show. <laughs> what we need to do. At some point, we're like, when we get up to like 30 or 40 shows, if I get a chance, I'll go back and like, we'll just do a, a, a Ron's uh, show. Like, we'll just take all those clips after that music and just make one big show out of all those, all those one-liners. And, and then, we'll, then we'll have a contest to see which one is the best. <laughs> oh, man. So, all right. What is- <laughs> oh, man. All right. There you go. All right. There we go. All, right. So, uh, all right. So what have you been playing? What have I been playing? Well, I've been going some doing some live streams on Twitch, so I resumed my 1986 Pro Football Replay. Had a couple of great games in that. I mean, uh, all I want for Christmas, Mazda Defense, for either the 86 Dolphins or the 86 Jets. Holy moly. Uh, if you didn't watch that on Twitch or YouTube, you should go back and do that. I haven't scored this much since I was engaged. 
I think we had a combined total of, well, one team didn't punt at all, and the other team punted twice. And I think it was like 16 touchdowns or something like that combined. Just 50, I'll, I'll tell you the final score, 56-42. I won't tell you who won. And the other game today with the, we, I just finished was was an cl- instant classic between the Cowboys and the Redskins. Um, playing around a bit with the uh, uh, Stratomatic basketball, trying to figure out what tournament I can do or what project I can do for that with the great teams. Uh, and, of course, I'm continuing my 81-82 uh, Oilers Islanders replay in Strat hockey. And, uh, man, when Edmonton clicks, they click. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you sent me some box scores once in a while, and I was like, ooh, look at that game. Oh, my God. And Edmonton, oh, I forgot who they almost lost to. Hartford, they went up seven. Hartford? No, uh, I think the Islanders, some Hart, – I. Hartford's won four games now. So Hartford, the computers actually won two games for Hartford. Uh, it may, No, there was one. I think it was St. Louis. Edmonton had a 7-3 lead. And in the last card, St. Louis came back to make it 7-6. Wow. Uh, yeah, fun, fun. So that's pretty much what I've been playing. Now, you did a uh, action PC hockey game too, right? I did uh, as a test for the Twitch and... Oh, that's right. I didn't really want to get into that because somehow the computer had set the rules to only have two periods. <laughs> I did uh, some test streams for uh, for my birthday. So it was pre-Thanksgiving. I did uh, two action PC baseball. I took the two teams I hated the most growing up and then played the two teams that I loved the most now, uh, which ironically was the Red Sox versus the Red Sox. Are you surprised about that? Uh, and then I did the two hockey teams that meant the most to me, which was the last Canadian Stanley Cup winner, which was in 1647, and and, uh, and the 75-76 Islanders, because I had replayed that entire season in Action PC and got them to the finals. They got beat by Montreal in five, but they made the finals. And for some reason, what well, I don't know if I was just messing around before with the rules, but it was a two-period game. And I'm doing the stream, and I'm wondering why the Islanders are on the power player or shorthanded or whatever, and they've yanked the goalie. Like, what? What court of... What kind of pretzel logic is that? No, it was the 40-minute game. <laughs> oh, you know, you you might have just been fiddling around with the settings there. and, and I, I, I'm i sure. I hit the, hit the wrong one. You know, the cat climbed on the keyboard. She changed some things. It could Every be. Every time I open up Amazon, I now have to buy more catnip. It's just terrible. Did you ever, uh, I, speak, speaking, of, speaking of that, did you ever hear this, the Steve Martin skit when he talked about his cat that got a hold of his bank account? It was a funny skit back in the day with Steve Martin and in the house, how his cat got a hold of his bank account. And it's like, you know, I got $1,500 worth of cat toys. You can't <laughs> see what the cat is doing behind that microphone, but she's having a good time. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so anything else you've been playing aside from watching the cats clean themselves? Uh, that's not playtime, at least not for me anyway. No, that's been pretty much it, you know, um... I'm about a quarter of the way through that NHL replay, and we've done some. No, not really. Uh, some OOTP. I, I have a fictional league where I'm a GM of a team and learning how to replay that because all the OOTP I do, I don't actually play the games, but I do the. I do enjoy the GM part. Oh, cool! I have a hard time with that. It just even the franchise. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, for sure. even the franchise hockey manager. I try to manage that. Oh, I'm lost. Well, there's yeah. we've talked about that. OOTP as far as yeah. help are concerned are miles ahead of what franchise hockey manager does. Yeah, but what what is fun about OOTP is that you can just let the game play. I just take I just take two teams, pit them against each other, and play it and broadcast it and and. I've gotten more than my ten dollars worth out of that already. I, I do. I enjoy that. I enjoy just kicking back and then watching the game play out, and uh, was just calling the names of all the the guys from the past that I enjoyed. So good. Uh, let's see. What have I been playing? Well, I've been playing a couple different things. Uh, first things first. Um, I I streamed a game of shootout hockey. I haven't played shootout in quite some time. You had fun with that too. And oh my gosh, I found a new app for the iPad that overlays a scoreboard. 
and that makes all the difference in the world because I mean, you try to figure out when you when you're trying to do a cards and dice whether you're streaming it or you're recording it, it it's so hard to show the score or show what's happening in the game because you know you want to show the cards but if you get too close you can't see anything else and if you back it up you can, you know so how can I do this that I can show the cards or at least have an idea what's going on and know the score without saying it every 2 seconds well this overlays an app like you're watching it on TV and if you go if you saw the video it is sweet I did Boston Quebec 1985 on the shootout hockey and I you know you, I rolled you could see the dice rolls and I flipped the cards and every time they scored, I could change the, the score. I could change the time of the game, too, because in shootout hockey, you subtract minutes off the clock. So at any point you tuned in, you could see the score, the period, and the time of this app. And it, it was so fun doing that. And I think it added so much to the broadcast. Yeah, you know, it really looked like a television broadcast. And so, the, and they have different scoreboards. So the next one up is baseball, and it actually has the diamond, and it shows you, you know, which guy, you know, if there's a guy on base and the outs and the whole bit. So that'll be up next. But I, I wanted to try it out with the hockey, and it works so far. The first test worked fantastic, and I even sent the company a nice note, and the guy got back to me. He's like, "Oh, I sent him the video." He's like, "Wow, that's cool. Thank you." Awesome. Uh, yeah. So shootout hockey with the new scoreboard overlay. Uh, I also played some Stratomatic baseball. Okay, alongside the All-Star line of baseball, I, I played some Stratomatic mm-hmm. baseball, learning the basic rules. And Mind you, this is a person that on the last of Game 7 of the World Series went on to one of our streams and boasted this was his favorite day of the year because baseball season baseball was season's over. Over. Yes, I You know s- what? You know what, Gardner? <laughs> I still don't like I don't want to say I still don't like it. The baseball games he played. Go ahead. I, I don't like it as much as I used to because I was big God into fine. it. You know, but when I was in the when I was you know between ten and fifteen, I was big into baseball. I played it, and we won the city championship when I was a teenager. And we had, and I loved it, and I had the baseball cards, and I followed it. And the game of the week I talked about earlier, I I liked it back in the day. So now that I can go back and play those teams, so I picked up some seventies and eighties season in that that you know seven or eight year nine year window that you know when you're you go from like you know uh, what do you like seven to 14 or, or eight eight Kenny to 15 Dryden says or has yep. contributed to saying that it, the sports will never mean more to you than it does at 14 yeah i think well i was a little younger than that i think this was when i was like 11 or 12 that those were my, oh, yeah. no, my I, I get what you're saying so i can go back now and so i got a, a handful of seasons and, and i'm able to 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 you know Go back and play in basic mode was really fun. And what I did is I alternated seasons between Strat and All-Star lineup baseball. So I have like, you know, one year here, one year there. So I can play the different games with the different teams. Uh, Strat baseball is really fun. It, it just, it was, it was, it reminded me a little bit of the hockey game. So that was kind of fun. And uh, so, yeah, so I played some Strat baseball. I also finally cracked open that Strat football game I got this summer. It was sealed and had the 1993 season in there. And mm-hmm. I cracked open a football game, and I watched a whole bunch of videos on how to play Strat football. And I tried to play it, and yeah, it was – Not a solitaire game. No. It really is not a solitaire no. game. You can play the other three just fine by yourself. Yeah. But football, you in my view – I had and a hard time send getting your cards and letters. We want to hear from you, but <laughs> I mean, it. I, I understood it well enough. I could see, like you know, when when you call the play and, and who got the ball and, and the result of the play. I, I got all of that. That was not a problem, but just. There was a lot of cards. You had quarterback card. You had running backs and receivers, and and you had to. It was just weird because you had to pick like what you wanted to do on the play with what back or what receiver. And the defense is supposed to counter by saying, "Do I want to double team a guy? Do I want to blitz? You know, or you can just have basic defensive run or pass, and you flip a dice to see if they got it right." And it, I, I couldn't find a way to make it fun for me. You know, when I play the fast action football or the mean gene, the game winning drive, it, that flows for me. It's a great solitaire experience. And, and this this was definitely head to head. You want to have someone across from you that that you don't know what they're going to call for a play or a defense. And, right. th- and that would be so much better like that. And and then the idea of how I had so many cards in front of me, and I know you, you have them in hockey too, but you can lay them out in groups of five. And I, I just found that trying to play by myself was too much. And I, and I didn't enjoy it that well. So I, I think that's extremely fair. So it was, if I had somebody else playing and you have your cards and I have mine and you don't know what I'm calling, I don't know what you're calling. 
and you and you play it like that, like like a game of Battleship or something, then fine. But exactly. But exactly. to tr- try to sit and play it solo, which I play everything solo, it it didn't work. So I was like, yeah, I just put it back in the box, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll sell it. Or, right. uh, Not a fan of the NFL. <laughs> I know. I, I would mean and ask her to play some, play some hockey with me or something. But anyway, so I tried the uh, the Strat football that didn't work out too well. Uh, and the final game I played was uh, final score hockey by Downey Games. I wrapped up my 1970-71 season, and when I told you I wrapped it up... You're literally just rolling for the final score. Yes, yeah. Um, so so Donnie's final score, in fact, why don't we... That, that's kind of our main segment here. So why don't yep. we get into the main segment? I'm going to talk a little bit about this game. We'll talk a little bit about the season. And uh, today, while you were streaming that uh, Redskins-Cowboys football game, I was actually rolling the playoffs. So I have a winner for the season, and... We're going to wait till the end of the show to tell you. Right. To who I don't won. even know who won. Yeah, you don't even know. So we're going to tease it. So you're going to have to wait till the very end of the show to find out who won that season replay here because I ended up playing the entire season. So so let's get into the meat and potatoes of the show. We'll talk about this long project. And, and Ron had some some things he wanted to add to that as yeah. well. So So here we go. What do you mean you can't get me into Caltech? I don't understand. Ah, piece of cake, piece of cake. So anyway, so I did the uh, entire 1970-71 season using Downey's final score uh, quick play game, okay? And and how you play this is is you, ha- you have your two teams. So let's just say Boston, Montreal. Boston has an offensive rating, a defensive rating, and a, uh, a pressure roll rating and an OT rating. Okay, and they also have a home ice rating if they're home. So what you what you really do is yeah, everyone has their different ratings. So if Boston's playing Montreal, it's Boston offense plus or minus the Montreal defense, depending what that number is, gives you an adjusted rating. You factor in the home ice, which may or may not change one or both teams. You get a final offensive rating, and then you roll the dice and look at the chart. So if your final rating is K, and you roll the dice and you get a thirty four, then you look at 34k and that's three goals and then you do the oh, same for montreal a through a through z or a it's, through it's, double? it's a through z but there is a they do have charts that go below a and above z but they you know i i had an one a rating and i think one y i never even got the z so if you have the best teams what happened in the regular season you never went because no i never got below a and i never got above z Wow. Okay. Yeah. Two D six. And after you make the adjustments, then you then, then you roll two D six. Yeah, two D six, and that gives you a number eleven to sixty six. And obviously, sixty six is the best. Uh, there are some wild cards in this thing, though. Like there is a a, a column that, that sometimes you'll get a BG. It's either big game or bad game. And so you you now roll on a different chart, and that'll tell you. Sometimes it'll tell you uh, roll up a couple of columns. So if you were a K, now you go K L M. Now you roll on column M, which is usually better scores usually. Uh, or it'll say get down a couple of columns, or it'll give you an actual number of how many goals you scored. Or it might even say roll off of roll uh, roll off of column A or column Z. And I've had that. When I got a big game, it turned into a bad game because I had to roll off a of column A. And Boston, actually, in this replay, now Boston, that was their best year, I think, 70-71. They lost to the expansion. At the time, it was probably the best regular season in real life, had the best yeah. regular season record ever. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Now, Boston, who stomped in this replay, and I'll get to one. I'll get to that in one second. They ended up playing Vancouver, who was an expansion team in Vancouver. And I rolled the BG. And when I rolled it, it said roll off a of column A. I rolled it. I got one goal, I think it was. And Vancouver got two or three, just enough to beat me. And so, yeah, so Boston, actually one of their few games they lost was to Vancouver in Vancouver in this game. Uh, so there's a couple of variables in there. The best part of this game, though, is the pressure roll, or the clutch roll, the close game roll, whatever you want to call it. If a game is tied or within one goal, you go to the team's pressure rating, and there's a pressure chart, and you got, uh, you know, usually it's only, you know, a few numbers out of the 11 to 66, you know, 64 to 66, or 61 to 66, that if you cash in with the pressure roll, you either tie the game or you can win the game, 
you know, at the end. So that's why it's called a pressure roll. And sometimes the other team has a chance to counter your pressure roll too. But that that was fun too, is having all these these pressure rolls in there. So it's like, okay, if it's within a goal, the game's not over. So even though it's a quick play game, you get a final score, that pressure roll. So anybody that's creating a game, the pressure roll, the clutch roll at the end is so fun. It really adds right. something. These are just quick play games, but it does add something where it's like, oh, Tie game. Can, can can this team pull it off? You know, so uh, so that's how Donnie's final score works. It's it's a single dice roll for each team after you find the adjusted ratings, factor in a, a possible pressure roll, and that gives you the end. Of, that gives you a final score. So I chose nineteen seventy seventy one for obviously it was Boston's best year, but also because there were only fourteen teams. Okay, the original twelve expanded with uh, Buffalo, Vancouver. So there were fourteen teams. They played seventy-eight games. So that was a grand total of five hundred and forty-six games. Compare that to modern day, where you're doubling the amount of teams, and I'd be looking at eleven hundred. You know, almost twelve hundred games. Oh, to play. At least in Se- Seattle will be the thirty-second team next year. So I was not about to get into that. So I said, okay, I, the fourteen teams is doable. And so what I did, I did it in chunks. Is I would I take I you had a you print out a score sheet you know with, with chunks you did it in three days no it took me a, a couple of weeks you know okay. here and there so so what I did is is you you know you print out all the score sheets first you know and there's like twenty score sheets twenty it's really thin tables I think you can get twenty games on a single page so I printed out a bunch of pages or whatever it was and I started filling in the schedule okay I had the schedule next when you fill in you know Boston at New York and you put in all their ratings and you come up with a final rating and so I did that like for the month of October so I had October ready to roll so to speak and then I would roll October and then I would input the stats into my hockey program and then I would sit down and I'd set up November and then when November was done I would roll November get all the scores and then input in my in my utility, so I did it in three different segments like that is how I did it. But it, it to to get down to how long it took, I, I figure it takes forty five seconds to a minute to do a game. So if you were to sit down with a blank piece of paper, put the two teams down, you know, put down their ratings, do do the quick math to get a final rating and roll the dice, you could do it in forty five seconds to a minute. Okay, uh, when I entered the game. It took me 15 seconds to enter the game because I really wanted to time out how long this took. So you're looking 45 seconds to a minute, maybe a shade over a minute to complete a game and enter a game. Now, that's if you did it one at a time. I, I did it in bulk, as I just mentioned. But so you figure, you know, 546 games, it's, you know, it's going to be a minimum of nine hours, I think it is, to do that, to, to play that out. So if I sat and mm-hmm. locked myself in a room, I could have done it in, in one day. I would have had a massive headache looking at all those numbers, and I probably right. stopped. It wouldn't have been much fun. It would have been funny. Stop making mistakes. So I just chipped away at. It. I'd you know get up in the morning and I'd I'd start mapping out some games on the table, you know, with coffee. And then that night before I went to bed, I'd do a few. And then you know me and you would chat a little bit, and I'd do a something like that. Or I mm-hmm. put on the TV, I watch a game, and so I would chip away at it and chip. You know, that's what that's how I did it. So I got all five hundred and forty six <laughs> games in, and uh, I I got done. I did a video of that today on my YouTube channel. I'm not exactly sure if I'd want to do this size of a project again. It was if you slowed down a bit. I think you'd find it enjoyable. Well, the the, the problem you, was you rushed. Yeah, but it was the time of the year too because I just picked up all these other games. You know, mm-hmm. I picked you know out of the park and uh, you know also Atlanta baseball, Strat baseball, Strat football. You know, I, you know all my Strat hockey seasons come in. I had a lot of games on my table. Not you know the the Strat hockey PC game I've been enjoying. So there's a lot of games that I have to play. So I started this project. It's like you know I, I'm enjoying it, but I do want to get it done. I want to see the results, and I want to move on to one of these other games. So, yeah, so probably not the best time of the year to start a project like this, Black Friday, <laughs> you know, with, yeah. all, you know, with all, the, all these the temptations to play and get all these other games. But uh, it it uh, it was fun to do once, and it, it was neat to see the results and compare it to the actual results, um, and that's what we'll talk about here. But if I did it again, I would probably just pick one or two teams and play them out for the season. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, maybe play the Bruins out and see if they could, you know, match what they did. Or maybe, t- right. you know, take the Seals and play them out rather than play every single game. Because let me tell you, when I when I get into February and March and I'm playing Minnesota, St. Louis, or Buffalo, you know. Uh, you know that's the bane of any it's like, <sighs> season replay is you get late enough in the season. I mean, in baseball, when there's 162 yeah. games for a team, 
Goody, it's Atlanta in Pittsburgh, 44 and 77. Oh, it's a doubleheader. Yeah. Great. You know, it's the same thing. So, yeah, so I, I finished it up. Uh, I, and I, I did roll the playoffs. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. But yep. I, I started posting the results of the replay uh, on, on you know Facebook and Delphi and a whole bit. And, and 130 people, by the way, have joined our Facebook group. Oh, fantastic. That is absolute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Facebook.com slash group slash digital device. Yep. Yeah, we got a good group of people there having some fun over there. People are posting their replays, and we got some good discussions going, and we get a lot of feedback from there, so it's it's really good. Uh, so yeah, so the project is done. It was a, uh, I want to say it's a long project, but hour wise and minute wise, it wasn't that long. Um, and uh, it's your most ambitious project. I yeah, think. I would say the ambitious. That, now that you've done this for a while. You've done some other quick play ones, but I think this one kind of was certainly much your fir- was your first conscious. This was this project. was yeah. I mean, this wasn't my longest project. So I think the seals replay of seventy three seventy four using the shootout hockey game was longer because that was fifteen minutes a game, roughly. Masochism at its finest. Yeah, days. it was, and that one got kind of tough as I talked about on one of our earlier shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but this one to do every single game and a even though it was a quick play, that pressure roll come into play. A lot, because a lot of the hockey games are close. Don't you on that? Yeah, I do actually. Um, so, well, what it was is uh, I didn't keep track of every time I, I rolled a pressure roll because there was so many games that were that was within a goal. But what I did find out is that out of the five hundred and forty six games, thirty five of those, thirty five of the five hundred and forty six, uh, the final score changed because of the pressure roll. Okay. Or actually, or actually, I should say 35 potential. There were three that were a stalemate. Okay. So 32 changed. So what, so what would happen is uh, if it was a one goal game or a tie game, I rolled the first team, got the pressure roll. I rolled again. The second team canceled the pressure roll. That happened. Th- there were no overtime in this season. No, there's no overtime. Yeah. So that, so three times out of 546, both teams successfully rolled on the pressure chart. Uh, and the other 32 times, one team did. And either tied the game or won the game. So the pressure roll came in not not often, but enough. I would say enough to to, to give it some. Uh, you know, yeah, about seven eight. You don't want it all the time, and you know you're going to have some games that are blowouts, as you're going to talk about. I think with the Bruins, and you're going to have games where where they were really close, and that's and that's what you want. Now, uh, talk a little bit about without being going through team by team, because you do it on your video if people want to see. But there were some things, as you and I talked last night, that were eerily almost dead on. Yeah, so the standings worked out. Uh, the 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 four teams in each com- uh, div- division, there was East and West, the, there was the same eight teams made the playoffs as in, as in real life. Okay. As they should. Because the back of the barrel just wasn't very good. Yeah. So uh, in each, so it was Boston, New York, in the East, and then Chicago. I think it was uh, St. Louis in the West. Teams three and four swapped in each division. So in real life, Montreal was the third seed. Toronto was four. In my replay, Toronto leapt ahead of Montreal. So so Montreal was the four seed. And then in in the West, too, I think Philadelphia and Minnesota flipped. But it was the same eight teams in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. The bottom three, I think, were flipped a little bit, too, in each division. There's seven teams in each division. So I think uh, the Seals finished last and Detroit finished last. That didn't change. But I think maybe the Kings and the Penguins flipped by a couple of points. And didn't the Penguins come within three of their real-life goal total? Which yeah. Is they were, they, I would say out of the 14 teams, what did we say? There was five or six that we that were really spot cool. on. Yeah, that either had the goals for or the goals against spot on. I think a couple of teams came within two points of their actual yes. point total. Um, so yeah, and that was the fun thing about it. When I was done, when I inputted the final game and I clicked on the standings, that was... It was pretty much in line. Now, with the exception of Boston, who, what did we say? They had 140 points? And 140 points in your replay. Or 142, I think. 156. It was, it was 140. 
two points. It might okay, have been 100. a possible 156. Yeah. If they went 78 0 and 0, they would have 156 points and 142 in your replay. I think, yeah, there was only seven games that they, uh, no, they lost, now, they lost six games and they had some ties. Now, they went, they won 57. It was the best regular season win total ever at that point. Now, Montreal is 160 and Tampa 166 last year or whatever. Um, but it was it was the best regular season team record at that point. And it kind of gets lost because they lost to Montreal in the playoffs. And so no one ever – that's the year that Esposito scored 76 and – Yeah. Uh, or had a plus-minus of 124. Yeah, it was ridiculous. But the, the way the, the playoffs, though, when I went to set up the playoffs, I actually had to go and research – what the format was in 1970 because what it was is is it wasn't one four two three it was one three two four which was weird and then what they did is they said okay teams one and three play the winner will play the two and four winner from the other conference so you played within your division and then you played the winner of the other division. It was really weird. And then those two winners went. So I guess the idea was that because, uh, you know, Bruins and Montreal had swept uh, St. Louis three times in a row since the expansion, they said, we can't have that. So they had a, a crossover. So you could have two teams from the east. They moved Chicago to the west. Yep. And that it meant you're right, but you could could, could have conceivably had a Boston-Montreal final. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you actually could have. Um so, uh, so that was really weird how they did that. But uh, yeah, so in my replay, you know, I had a couple of changes in the playoffs, but the standings were almost they were right in line to what it was. I the one thing that stuck out when I get done though was how the the top teams fared better than their real life counterparts, and the bottom teams fared worse than their real life counterparts, and the middle kind of fell in the line. Middle was remarkably yeah. spot on. Yeah, and so that's what that's what I got out of it was the Bruins finished with way more points. Chicago actually finished higher than they did in real life, and the Seals and the Red Wings finished. Uh, I at least the Seals finished with a lot less wins and points than in real life. So I found it very difficult for the underdog teams to get wins in this game. And if you like, the Bruins were favored. I think they lost. What they lose six games. In my re- I think they lost six. I mean, you, you went 62. No, you won 67. I think you're right, yeah. Which is in a 78-game season. Absolutely unbelievable. They scored 400. Okay, yeah. yeah, 67, 5, and 6 is they what I went. 452 goals, which the trusted calculator last night told me was 5.71 and then a whole bunch of numbers after that per game. And we looked – last night to see if there was anything that was remarkably close to that. Cause in real life, they scored 5.11. Uh, and I looked up Edmonton's best point season from the eighties and they averaged over five. It was like five Oh two, five Oh three. And so this would have been the most prolific off- offense in the history of the National Hockey League. Yeah, and that's the one thing I came away with this replay was was just man, there's just no way this team can lose. And aside from that, if they didn't lose that, if they didn't roll the bad game against Vancouver, they would have been sixty eight, four and six, which is insane. It's almost like running the table. So it was a fun replay, and uh, I think it was um, Patch eighty three made a comment on my YouTube video, and he said that. In these replays, the better teams tend to to, to win. You know, the top teams tend to win more, and the bottom teams win less. Is kind of kind of what we're saying here is that the, the it's hard for the bottom teams to get any traction in these replays. And here's why. I didn't want to get into this last night. Okay, I wonder that's why we're doing the show today. Here's why. Whether it's a card or a computer file or whatever, everything is made at the end of the year. And so if you're really, really good, your cards are going to, your data or your cards are going to be reflected as really, really good. And in a, in a one roll game such as this, they're going to be really, really good because you want them to replicate it. But on the flip side, something has to give. And so while let's say the 62 Mets or the 74 Capitals or 76 Buccaneers may have had a week where they did really well. The Mets might have won a couple in Chicago. 
or the Capitals might have tied somebody, gotten to Philadelphia, and maybe gotten a one goal game, and you had the human emotions of momentum. Data and cards and dice have no emotions. And so your record is your record is your record. And so if you stunk up the joint, they want to make sure that you try to get around that same one or loss thing. But if your ERA as a pitcher was 647, or if your goals against average was five and a half, guess what your cards are going to be? Yeah. Crappy. And so you're going to give that up as, as that. And so, yes, terrible teams are going to do really bad. And top of the level teams like your Bruins there are never going to lose. I bet if you did that in baseball with the 86 Mets or the 27 Yankees or the 75 Reds, you you would do a hundred quick replays and they would win their division a hundred times. Playoffs, of course, are a different story. There's just no way that a team that would win 108, 110 games, or even if you did the the seven of uh, the 2007 Patriots, they may they might finish 15 and one, but there's no way that the 2007 Patriots are ever going to do a replay where they're seven and nine. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know that's the fun with it. Fun of it was uh, seeing the results, seeing how close to real life they were. But as I've talked about on the show, I want to see a little bit of variety. You know, I, I don't replay these things to get the exact same result. I would like to see something different happen. I want to see you know a, a team get hot, a team you know uh, you know get, get in a slump. I mean, you know that that's what makes sports fun is you never know who's gonna win. Right. But in that's- in this replay, I kind of did. And it didn't help the fact that you know if you run if you remember when I I did that Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus Pittsburgh uh, Steelers you did replay that in like seven or eight or thirteen different engines or whatever it yeah was. I think I tried seven or eight different games and the and the Buccaneers actually beat the Steelers in one of them and it was momentum football and I remember th- that I just kept rolling high numbers for Tampa Bay and that's the only way they could score and I kept rolling low numbers for Pittsburgh and that's the way that the only way they wouldn't score and Tampa Bay actually won the darn game which they never would in real life so the other the other engines were pretty spot on there was a couple that were closer than no- than normal but uh they got blown out in real life and um they shouldn't have never beat Pittsburgh in one of my replays they did and uh it's yeah. so it can happen in cards and dice if you roll the if, depending on how you roll the dice and that particular game was just it was a one-sided dice affair and w- when I started rolling for Boston because obviously when the Bruins were on the schedule I paid attention when I rolled the dice because I was like okay it's the Bruins game and um it's, and I was rolling 60s 66 six, and I was getting 8 9 10 goals a game because I kept oh, yeah, rolling average, high almost 6 you averaged 574 I mean they beat the the biggest blowout was the Seals 10 to nothing and I think that's the highest I could go was 10 goals on the chart. So they, and they rolled it. I mean, you didn't need to roll 66 against the seals and they did, you know, and the seals rolled 11 to 12 or 13, which gave them nothing. The other thing about doing a regular season hockey or basketball replay, when you have so many teams making the playoffs is that there are no races really to be there. When you play replay the eighties and it's four deep in every division and you have the Norris division where Toronto, I think one year made the playoffs on 56 points, you know, I mean, that, that kind of deters, why would I want to do that? Because any meaningful action is, is when you start the playoffs anyway, but you know, it's interesting to look at that. I remember growing up, it's like, why would you want to watch this? The game doesn't matter because their fates are already determined. Talking about like a regular season of hockey or something like that. You know, what's the difference, okay? If first is up by 15 points, what's the difference? Your first round game is going to be you're either at home ice against Quebec or you're at Le Colisee for game one. Your your fates are sealed. But, you know, it's good to go through and it brought back some good things. And one of the things I didn't realize until you posted the preliminaries is I didn't realize it. You know, everyone talks about 69, 70 Boston and, and or flying through the air and blah, blah, blah. You know, we've talked about it. It's a fish story. You know, <laughs> that the 70, 71 team is one of the best teams of all time. But if you don't win the big one, you are, I put Dave to sleep, you are provisioned to the dustbin of history and is not a team that's remembered. 
Yep, and they just uh, they, they dried and got hot and ended up. But I look back at the actual playoffs, and every series, except for one, was four to three. There was one four to two series, maybe two four to twos. But they all they all went six or seven games. You know, so it worked. What the NHL so what they wanted to do worked. actually worked. Yeah, you know, everything went went no, four to no three. Don't want to tell three. Gary Bentman that something the NHL might have done actually works. Yeah, so it it, it it panned out pretty well. But yeah, so so that's what I got out of this this replay was it was fun. Not sure I want to do something this. I hate to say this size because time wise it wasn't that bad, but just the, the, all the setups of the games and rolling them and how many games I I just was rolling because I didn't care about you know I I was keeping accurate. You know, uh, scores, but just you know, like I say, you get into late in the season, you get two teams that are out of the playoffs. Oh, I really got to score this game, you know. But that's but that's why you wonder why people buy great pennant races or great single team performances for that because that's what you run to replay. Because okay, let's say you're doing a football replay and the Patriots had a good year. Well, let's go with 2007. Whoever was someone had to finish last in that division. Yeah, you really want to go through and roll their Two and eleven game against the three and twelve of the other team. Oh, yeah. goody, that's going to be watched by friends, family, and mistress. yeah. Well, the good thing about uh, the, the final score games or the quick games here that you got, whether they're the Seelock games or the Downey games or the Mike Owens games, is you can get scores quickly. So if you want to play a game of Strat on the table, if you want to play Hockey Blast or something like that, you have another game to get some quick final scores. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Now, th- you know, this is uh, the season was doable. You know, 546 games was doable, you know, and so I did it. Uh, but but again, I'd be using this for final scores, you know, for, you know, bigger projects if I went and, or, or pick one team. But it was fun. I, I, the results were, like, like you said, we went over them, you know, with a fine-tooth comb last night. Some of them were spot on. There were some, the, the goals. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. The the points were almost identical on some teams. The uh, the goals. Wasn't Philly's points were within one. Yeah. And like I said, I think Pittsburgh was within, I two, think goals two. scored was within two. Yeah. It was it was pretty. Uh, I, I think I I don't know if I did. If I didn't, I will post the uh, this on the Facebook group for us. The, the the comparing the final standings. I thought I did that, but maybe I didn't. I think I put on. I haven't. You might have this morning. I haven't looked. I saw the the last ones from December. Oh, you, we talked to the last time about the final standings. All right. So, Dave, where's your, who won your Stanley Cup? All right. Well, it's it's only appropriate. Community college, come on. I love you better than that. But I can visit you because I'll be closer at the jail I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway, so here's how the playoffs went down, okay? In the first round, it was Boston taking on Toronto because Toronto was the third seed. If you remember, it was one versus three right. in the East. And uh, Boston took their first two games. Toronto then took two. But Boston came back to win the series four to two. So I'm kind of oh, I'm, I'm glad that Boston didn't just wipe out everybody in this this playoff. So they actually struggled a bit against Toronto. Uh, yeah. New York got by Montreal in seven games. Game is rigged. Four to three. We'll never yep. discuss this again. Four three. Yep. Montreal came back. To, I think in, in that series, all the home teams won. So okay. New York had the better record, so they were home. Yeah, so New York was two. Montreal was the four seed in my replay. So and Dryden went back to law school, and Dave's childhood was much happier. Yep. Uh, Chicago, the top seed in the West, uh, they got by Minnesota 4-2. to That was actually an easy seed, although Minnesota took two at home in overtime. I needed overtime for the two Minnesota wins because they were rolling off the A column in Chicago. Which meant I think oh I think the, the most that they could have scored on even on a sixty six was three, <laughs> you know, if they got a perfect roll, but they got smoked and somehow in in Chicago they got a couple of big rolls, forced overtime and won in overtime both times. Uh, so Chicago by Minnesota, it's the St. Louis uh, easily by Philadelphia, four games to one in the next round. So Boston took on St. Louis. Because Boston was the top seed in the East, taking on the second seed in the West, and uh, final three Bo- match from seventy. Yeah, yeah, Boston swept that one four to nothing. Just piece of cake. They just destroyed them. Chicago easily got by the Rangers four games really? to one. Yep, four games to one. They took it right down there. And in the finals, it was Boston Chicago, not Montreal Chicago, and yeah, Boston got by Chicago four games to one. So Boston. See, you tease that. I thought Boston had lost around. I'm not. Boston should have won the cup. 
Yeah. No question about yeah. that. In fact, what was neat about the final, well, being a Boston fan, neat, okay, is Boston easily won the first two games at home. They uh they they won game three in Chicago. Game four now now the first three games were all five to three. It was an, it was five to three Boston, five to three Boston. So Chicago at least was showing up for yeah, the game. Five to three Boston. The first three games were all five to three. Game four was three to three going into overtime. And how fitting would it have been if Boston had scored in overtime to win four to three in game four to sweep the series. That would have been a repeat of the 70 cup basically is what it would have been uh, almost identical, but they didn't. They, Chicago pulled that one out at home in overtime to force game five at back home at Boston. Boston easily took it. So yeah. So Boston defeated Toronto, St. Louis and Chicago and ended up. So they did what they, they should have done. Didn't what they should have done. Yeah. Uh, and all the top seeds moved on uh, Boston, New York, Chicago, St. Louis. They all moved on. In, in my replay. So that's what I found out about this replay is that the the better teams have a distinct advantage. And, and I know they should, but the, the upsets are, uh, I find it very hard small, because in a quick play game like that, it's you're reading off table, two tables. Yeah. And, 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 and unless, no... unless you really roll high or really roll low at the correct time, the law of averages and the math in the game pretty much dictates who's going to win. And looking at the average teams in the league, the math was perfect. But but that's a year where there was one man amongst a lot of boys. Yeah, that, that season, yeah, there was – I mean, it, even when you looked at the ratings, it was – it was Boston, New York, Montreal, Chicago, and then everybody else. There was nobody else that even had ratings close to that. So would it be possible – and we'll close with this. We've talked about offline the 85-86 playoffs. Edmonton won the Smythe by 30 points over Calgary. They had 119. and Cal- Calgary wasn't a bad team, but they only had 89. Calgary wins that in seven. They beat the easier team in the Norris, and they lost to Montreal for cup number 23. Okay, not not picking on Calgary there anyways. Could a team that was 30 points behind in the standings, in your mind, win a postseason series? I mean, Calgary, Edmonton, I wasn't a huge hockey fan then. That must have been one hell of a fluke. And the fact that they're within a couple hundred miles of each other and rivals, you throw out the records and, and all that. But could that have happened in this game? It, it really depends on the ratings that they were given. You know, again, my top two teams in each division moved on, and they were the top two teams in, in real life. So it was pretty true true to what really happened. Uh You know, Minnesota had no shot against Chicago, but they won two games at home. And, you know, because they were rolling off of column C rather than column A. Well, now that, that's a big deal because column A is the worst the worst column to roll off of. So you have to be rolling high numbers, which they did at home, and then they somehow pulled it out in overtime. But there was no way they were going to win a game in Chicago unless they rolled a 66 and Chicago rolled an 11 because Chicago was rolling off a column, you know, R or S or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And they they would just, you know, they only needed a, 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 a 15 or a 16 and that that would have been plenty, and so the the chances of them rolling a win were so high that I, you know. So when Minnesota tied that series to two to two, I was like, man, that's great, but there's no way they could win this, and they they didn't. They got spanked in the next two games. So I don't think so. I don't think a team that far back could win. A second place team maybe could upset because I did that. I did a final score replay. I think it was what the seventy nine eighty season. I did. Uh, on my YouTube channel, I replayed the playoffs, and uh, the Islanders, who I th- I think won in, in 80, was that the Islanders that won? Yes, it was their first. Okay, they did not win it that year. They they oh, they Philly Buffalo. You had Philly Buffalo in the final. Yeah, uh, the Islanders, I think the Islanders actually lost to Boston. I think they played in real life, and Boston bumped them out in my replay. No? No, I'm sure you're right. I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm trying to just, I don't remember. But the Islanders were knocked out. The Islanders did not win my replay. And I think it was actually the Buffalo Sabres. Who got, I, think, I think it was Buffalo. The who, Islanders, had a t- Arbor had a tendency going into that year to ride them hard in the regular season. And by the time they got to the play, I mean, they're, they're one year they lost to Toronto and had no right to lose to Toronto. That they would, there was just nothing left in the tank. By the time they get they got deep in the playoffs, and so that year Arbor kind of relaxed them a bit in the regular season, and well, the rest is history. 
Yeah. So uh, in the playoffs there, like I say, it is possible a little bit. So, But Buffalo was a highly rated team. You know, but so you take all the playoff teams and, you know, the bottom teams were eliminated immediately, you know, in my in that playoff run. But, uh, you know, I'd say the top three or four teams all have a shot, you know, depending on the dice rolls. But a team that's that far back, you know, like I said, my bottom groupings were the bottom groupings in real life. Nobody had a shot. And the bottom two teams in the playoffs were bumped off fairly easy, too. But you had fun. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. I obviously had a lot of fun. And that's why I kind of rushed through it because I wanted to get it done. I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to see what it was all about. And um, so now that I've done it, it was fun. Uh, but, yeah, I just, you know, don't think I'd want to do it again, at least not for a while. It was fun, though. I'm a stat guy. I like numbers, and, and that's what made it fun. And having that, that hockey utility to put the standings in made it really, really easy to keep the standings, too. Well, there you have it. So there you have it. So, yep. So uh, we want to hear about your full season replays. Have you done a full season replay? You know, what, what game did you play it with? How long did it take? I know that there's some people, Ron, are out there that uh, are playing, you know, strat hockey and strat baseball, and they're playing every single game. And, and and I remember replying to them, like, you don't mean, like, every single game, do you? And, and the guy's like, I'm playing Every single game was strat, and I'm like, you know how many games that is? If you played a modern baseball season, yeah, that'd be a ton. I think this was he guy was doing hockey, two thousand four hundred and thirty. Oh, so this one guy that I was talking, to, he, he was doing hockey. And I was like, how long is this gonna take? He says, I don't know, but it's been two years. <laughs> he goes, I'm in no hurry. <laughs> no, and there is no hurry, and. Sometimes you go great guns, and sometimes you don't touch it for two weeks or a month. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how you do it. Yep. And so that's just uh, one of these products that are on the back burner, and, and you just take your time with it. But there are some people that do that. So, yeah, what have you done for a full season replay? What are your results been, and uh, what are your thoughts about it? And, and do, you, do you prefer to do the whole season? Do you just do playoffs? Do some people like to do tournaments? You know, uh, you know what do you think about my results? You know, I, I'm not surprised that uh, Boston went all the way after seeing how that season went. You know, so if I was going to use those same ratings for the playoffs, and there was no doubt Boston won, uh, you know, they really weren't challenged in the playoffs at all either. So, but then again, neither were Chicago really. Chicago, they what four to two, and then four to one. Boston four to two, four to zero, oh, and then then the, you know, so Boston, you, Boston, Chicago you, were two best teams. You know what? doesn't happen in those games, which is what happened in the playoffs that year, Bellavo's last ride and Dryden, you know, and, and whether Chicago should have beaten Montreal, that was not a good month. That was not a great Montreal team. And they just got hot at the right time and yep. the big veteran clicked. And so the big rookie. Yep. And that, I didn't see that in my replay. And that's, that's one of the things, but again, it's just, yeah. it's just, yeah, you can't, it's just, it's just a, it's a quick play dice game and, and this and that. And I had my fun and I'm no way am I putting the game down. I, I, it was a lot of fun. I still continue to play it. I still will pick a team. And I, I think next time, as I mentioned, I'll just pick one team and I'll do the 78 or 80 games. And that's something you could do in a couple of hours. You really could. And just to see, uh, you know, how that team fared against the rest of the league without having to play all those other games, you know? And it was fun to do it once. It was fun. Maybe I'll do it again at some point, but it'll be a while. Because I have all these other games in now that I want to play and the whole bit. So, yeah, we'd like your feedback on that. Uh, we'd like your feedback on what you got for Black Friday at Cyber Monday. Tell us about some of the games you got. If you got games, you got seasons. If you've seen any good cat memes out there on the Internet, let us know. Uh, the whole bit. So, anyway, uh, so what do you say we wrap this up? Let's wrap this up. All right, how can people reach us, Dave? Couple different ways. Digital to dice dot com is our website right over there on Spreaker, so you can find all of our shows there, listen to them there. You can actually find us on iHeart Radio and uh, I iTunes Podcast Store on the iPhone. I mean, we're, we're everywhere. We got the podcast up at all the other podcasts. I think even we're on the fine podcasts. Service. Yeah, I think uh, we have it up on the Google Play Store as well. If you got podcast app over there, uh, we do have a phone number. If you want to send us a text, nine seven eight seven five one dice nine seven eight seven five one three four two three. Send us a text uh, about the show. Let us know if you like it. What, what topic do you like us to talk about? And our Facebook group is 
uh, live and kicking facebook.com slash group slash digital to dice. And so that wraps up episode 20. We got Christmas coming up. So may, we might have to do a Christmas show. Talk about what games we want for Christmas. There you go. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.